I will quickly uh, try to describe you um, what you need to use uh, in addition to default value, in addition to the um, some skeleton values on the uh, deployment files. Um, my name is Koray. I work for Kubernetes uh, remotely from Istanbul and well, interested in all cloud technologies and stuff. So um, when you want to make a deployment, so this could be, I mean, you could be someone, someone new to the Kubernetes world or maybe a um, company working with Kubernetes for quite some years. If you go to the Kubernetes uh, documentation or if you use a VS Code uh, plugin, you will get this um, YAML file, which is the bare minimum to have a deployment. But the question is, um, okay, your application will work with this uh, YAML file, but the question is, is it uh, secure and reliable? Um, First thing I will talk about is the quality of service. So you probably know there are three uh, quality of services in Kubernetes. It's guaranteed or burstable or best effort. And the, the, the YAML file that we just saw is on the best effort because uh, we didn't uh, define any resources. So it has the lowest priority and will be uh, your pods will be killed in case of um, um, uh, out of uh, resources uh, of the system. Um, so what you need to do to have uh, other quality of services, uh, you need to add some uh, resource definitions, requests and limits uh, to your YAML file. If you define them differently, then you will have at least guaranteed this uh, request value. So this, this is burstable. Uh, class, or if you define them with the same values, then you will have the guaranteed value. You will always have these resources for this container uh, all the time. Um, and then you need to uh, define the probes, especially readiness and liveness probe, because you don't want your container to get traffic before it gets ready. Maybe your container will need to do some stuff uh, before that. So uh, you need to define a, a readiness probe that you make sure that uh, you are ready to get some traffic and also liveness probe to check if your application does not have any deadlock issue or any other problem. Um, so that if there's an issue, Kubernetes will be able to restart your pod and then uh, continue working. Um, for security part, you need to add the security context, especially the uh, you need to run as a non-root user uh, your container if you are interested or if you are asking why, then uh, I would suggest to uh, search the internet for container escape uh, vulnerabilities or issues. Um, also, uh, you should uh, define a read-only root file system. By default, uh, the, these have the, uh, uh, so for example, read-only file system is false, but uh, you should define it as true. And um, you definitely want to terminate your pods gracefully. Um, so um, what happens is that basically uh, when you want to terminate a pod, uh, Kubernetes send a uh, seek term to PID one of, of your container. And that part might be tricky, I'll come to that. And the default value is for timeout is uh, 30 seconds. And if you see that your application always waits for this 30 seconds, then um, you should check your Docker file. Because if you, in your Docker file, if you defined your CMD instruction as the shell, uh, mm, uh, shell style, then the shell will take the PID one and that one will be killed and your application will continue to run. And if that process needs to do some cleanup, it will never do it and you might lose data or other stuff. So for reliability, uh, you need that. And also if you, if 30, 30 seconds is not enough, then you also uh, increase it. And um, I would definitely suggest to uh, distribute your pods. Of course, you will have more than one replicas, um, but um, running those uh, two or three replicas on the same node is also not a good idea uh, for reliability. So uh, defining a, an, an anti-affinity rule to have to ask the scheduler to uh, schedule your pods on different nodes of the system is a, a nice idea. So all combined, your uh, spec section uh, for the deployment will be like this. And maybe it would be a better idea to check for those things uh, with uh, some uh, OPA rule or something else to uh, make sure that all your uh, deployments have um, 
at least those uh, values defined. Um, thank you very much and uh, 